Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. I couldn't be happier to present today somebody that I've known for a few years through mutual friends, our friends, Dr. Vin Patel and Chitra Prasad Patel, who um, I've had on the show before. Um, really, really happy that Dr. Fazi Ahmed is here today. He is a neuropsychiatrist, which is some, one of the things I want to talk about. Um, the name of your practice is neuro, Tampa Neuropsychiatry. Um, and you have recently opened a location up in St. Pete. So we want to talk about that. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Sharon. Really appreciate it. Um, so uh, I, I called my clinic Tampa Neuropsychiatry because I, uh, I have a, a background in, um, in neuropsychiatry, which is sort of a, a separate field from psychiatry and a separate field from neurology. Mm -hmm. um, after I finished psychiatry training, I did a, a, a two-year fellowship at Johns Hopkins in neuropsychiatry. And as soon as I finished, I moved down to Florida and opened a practice. And so I named it Tampa Neuropsychiatry. I love it. I love it. So do you get that question a lot, though, about what's the difference between psychiatry and, you know, what you've developed with neuropsychiatry? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even even my physician colleagues, even my psychiatry colleagues uh, will ask me sometimes, you know, what, what's it all about? How is that different from what we do? And uh, the answer is pretty basic. We just we have a different set of diseases that we specialize in in neuropsychiatry. So, you know, in typical psychiatry, we treat you know, major depression, anxiety disorders, PTSD, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia. In, in neuropsychiatry, we, we focus on uh, brain injuries that have caused psychiatric or cognitive problems. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, if somebody has a head injury and now they're having attentional problems or, or uh, memory problems as a result, that would be something that, that I would see. And um, if somebody has... Uh, a, a dementia, meaning, you know, a, a cognitive decline in, 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 a, in late life, that would be something that a neuropsychiatrist would handle. So I, I named it Tampa Neuropsychiatry because I specialize in this, but we, we still treat primary psychiatric disorders, mostly. The majority of our population, our patient population has depression or anxiety or ADHD or something typical like that. Sure. And you also see children in your practice? I don't see children. Mm -hmm. So psychiatrists, uh, they tend to uh, uh, be pretty conservative with, with mm -hmm. uh, adult psychiatrists and be pretty conservative in that regard and don't see children because it's its own specialty. Child and adolescent psychiatry has a two-year training. So, mm -hmm. so I don't. Okay. Good to know. We certainly need that. And, um, you know, mental health right now is, uh, I don't even know what to say anymore because it's, it's so busy and um, there's so much help that is required that, um, I always want to ask that question because, because I ran a pediatric office. I knew how hard mm. it would be to get the kids into um, see a psychiatrist. We had psychologists that were easier, more readily available. But um, now, especially, the, it's just a very tough time. So I want to talk about two things. Number one, why St. Petersburg? So you have since opened a second location since last time I saw you. It's been a few months now. Um, I think it's a great idea. I mean, what better place to be than St. Pete, right? Um, so what was the motivation behind opening up a second location? Well, um, we, uh, we, we started in Tampa in 2016. We've grown quite a bit and we basically just needed to expand. Um, we, uh, we looked at uh, which other areas in the Tampa Bay uh, region are sort of lacking in psychiatrists and, and St. Pete came right up to the top. There, there are... Uh, some psychiatrists there, but a lot of the a lot of the folks don't take uh, health insurance. You know, they have cash only practices, small practices, uh, which is not uncommon at all. You know, in psychiatry, but uh, we thought we could bring our model to St. Pete and you know and and, and uh, you know do some good over there. Yeah, I think it's great. And you have something very exciting that you're bringing to St. Pete, which I can't wait to hear more about. You are bringing TMS. Will you please tell the audience what? that stands for and what it actually does. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so I'm really excited about it too. So TMS stands for transcranial magnetic stimulation. And uh, it's basically, it's a medical device, uh, not too big. Um, and um, it, it, uh, it delivers an electrical, uh, electrical current to, to your brain. Uh, basically it, it emits a magnetic field and it's a very focused magnetic field that activates a very small brain area. And so, TMS was FDA approved to treat depression uh, 
2008, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it, it has been pretty widely used since then. Um, insurance companies started to pay for it after a few years, including Medicare and Medicaid that kind of That's set the tone for the commercial insurances. Mm -hmm. And um, really it, it's become kind of the go-to treatment for people that have failed a couple of medications. So when, when people are treated for depression, um, it's a, the, the chances of recovery, like for example, if I came to you and I said, you're a psychiatrist and I said, Sharon, I'm, I'm depressed, help me out. And you said, all right, here, here's this medication, take it and, and, and let's see if it'll work. The chances of me getting better with that medication are about 35%. Mm -hmm. But if, if I'm not in the 35%, I'll come back to you and I'll say, hey, Sharon, it didn't work, help me out. And you say, okay, here's another antidepressant, let's try this other one. Then the chances of me getting better are 30%. So we got a good chunk of people so far, right? Yeah. But now if I come back and say, Sharon, that still didn't work, what else is there? So when you give me that third medication, now my chances of getting better are 10%. Wow. It really drops. Yeah. But if instead of giving that person another antidepressant, you say, hey, Fazzy, I got this other idea. Why don't we do this TMS? The chances of me recovering are 40 plus percent. Wow. So four times greater. You think, all right, well, what about the rest of the 60%? You're right. That's a big problem. It's, it's still, you know, it's, it's, it's a, we still have to work very hard to, you know, to make sure that everyone's okay. But TMS will get 30% more than what we would get with just antidepressants alone. That's incredible. So yeah. I don't know if we've ever had this conversation before you and I, but probably not. We're usually talking about like business and medicine. <laughs> but, yeah. um, you know, I suffered terribly from depression um, from 19 to 21. I'm sober. I'm 26 years sober. I wrote a book about it um, and I released it last year. That's why I bring it up a lot. And I have a strong focus towards mental health right now because you know, um, one of the reasons I decided to start talking about it openly was because here I am, you know, I own two businesses and I, he, if, if somebody met me today, they would never know that I suffered so deeply and that I was, you know, addicted and had this life before uh, what I have today. So um, I knew sharing my story and telling other people what it was like for me, um, maybe could give them a glimmer of hope. So that was my, my choice to do that just two years ago. Um, and I bring that up because, you know, depression is debilitating, right? And I can speak personal experience, right? And um, I know that if I did not have the right team, I call them my A-team, <laughs> that were in place when I was 21 years old. My dad was working at New York Hospital. We had, he had an EAP counselor that he loved and he said that I would love. And um, I, I trusted my father. I went in to see this uh, wonderful therapist and he along with a psychiatrist, you know, it put me on the right medication. I was on 20 milligrams of Prozac for six months and I haven't taken any medication since. Now, I know that I'm one of few that are that like lucky almost um, because we, we did try something else once before and I barely remember it because I was still um, very into my disease of alcoholism and addiction that it was all a big blur. But this was so helpful because I had somebody else that was kind of monitoring me. And I know if somebody said that there was something out there like TMS, I would have signed up for it immediately because you really feel so alone in it. And you really don't feel like there's any hope and you don't feel like there's any light at the end of the tunnel. And it took a while for me, you know, along with getting some outside help and practicing meditation and exercising and every other darn thing that you could do to, to feel better. Um, I know for sure, um, that's why I'm so excited about TMS today, because I, I know people personally that um, have tried it and are, are slowly getting better. You know, it's not some, it's just like everything else, right? It's like, it's not like this quick fix. It's not like you're going to go for one session and be okay. So me sharing that with you might've been a lot, but I thought it was important that you knew that. Oh, I'm um, glad you did. Yeah, because I think that it's important that people know that there, there is hope and that there are alternatives and that not, I know that you are like many other psychiatrists, friends of mine that get a bad rep sometimes that you're just all about writing as many prescriptions as possible. It's actually not what they want to do. <laughs> <laughs> they want to get you better. So, um, so sh in sharing that, you know, I, I love that there is this opportunity for people to heal with, with other options along with maybe the medication, along with talk therapy, 
I'm sure that was the goal of bringing this into your practice, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It gives us a, a, a major, major um, uh, strength, you know, that, that we don't have with just medications and therapy alone. Yeah, I mean, really, you guys, sometimes I feel, I feel bad knowing that you want to do more, but it's never just about that pill. There's so much more work that needs to be done. Yeah, I want to I talk about that. So, uh, so Sharon, basically, what in, 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 uh, in studies of depression, um, we, uh, we have a pretty large data set where we've isolated uh, parts of the brain that are hyperactive when people are depressed and parts of the brain that are decreased in activity or hypoactive. And, um, and pretty consistently, what's found is that the deeper parts of the brain that regulate emotion are too active. They're firing too much and too fast. And, um, and, and this part of the brain, we kind of group together and we call it the limbic system. And so um, in, in, when people have depression, their limbic system is actually firing too much. You would think maybe they're depressed, it's firing less, it's underactive, that's not the case. There's too much emotion of depression going on in our emotional centers of the brain. And then our frontal lobes, where we do our conscious thinking, actually have a decrease in their activity. Mm. And, and so this combination is kind of what we're trying to correct with all our depression treatments. This is the goal. We want this to normalize. And interestingly, what we find is that in clinical studies of antidepressants, the, the, the hyperactive emotional part or limbic system decreases when we're successful with antidepressants. So the antidepressants normalize that part. And, and when people get better with psychotherapy or talk therapy, it's actually the frontal lobes that increase in their activity. Mm. Um, and what, what TMS does is it actually targets a specific part of the frontal lobe that's been found to be hypoactive in depression. It's called the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. It has a lot of different functions, but, uh, but, but for whatever reason in depression, it has a decreased activity. And, and this, this, uh, this part of the frontal lobe, we call it the DLPFC, it has very rich connections with the deeper emotional parts of the brain. Mm. So, so by stimulating that part, the DLPFC with TMS, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're increasing the DLPFC's activity. And at the same time, we're decreasing the limbic system activity. So okay. we are actually neurologically correcting this brain problem that we see in depression. Now, are we fixing the underlying cause? Well, I mean, probably not. I mean, you know, there, there are multiple reasons why people become depressed or, you know, have this pattern of brain activity. Um, you know, chronic stress and acute stress are the main factors. Genetic predisposition plays a big role. Nutrition can play a big role. Uh, you know, a whole slew of different things. Trauma. Absolutely, absolutely. Trauma can play a huge role in, de in development of depression. So, yeah. so with TMS, we're basically saying, okay, we're going to fix whatever problem is going on in your brain and you're going to feel better, but that doesn't mean that it's never going to come back. You still have to address the risk factors that have triggered this depression, you know? So yeah. TMS is half the battle, you know? Sure. You know, and I've described this um, in my book and, and speaking to, to many people about it um, over the last two years that I truly felt like something had happened to me, like there was something wrong. Like I remember telling my um, therapist at the time that if you would just lock me up into a padded room, much that looks like this one, but I'm, I'm not in a padded room, everybody. I'm in my office. <laughs> that I would have been happy with that because I really felt like there was no way out of it. I grew up a very happy child. I was very athletic. I was popular. I was in private school, you know, um, all of the things that you could ever want. And how could this have happened to me? I know today, right? And this is 26 years later um, in retrospect and, and having wonderful um, physicians in my life and, and having great conversations and going to therapy and all that other stuff. That, you know, a lot of it for me was trauma. And a lot of it for me was not just having you know, this medication, but to have this talk therapy and to really dive into getting to the root of the problem. Um, 
just from my own personal experience, I, I want to just ask you, because I've, I've seen this a lot because I'm, I'm in recovery 26 years. That means I'm still involved in 12 step programs and I help others. I see a lot of people that um, really depend upon your services, meaning just taking the prescription. We're not talking about TMS now um, and, and really not doing too many other you know, things, not get, getting maybe the therapy, not changing their nutrition, not exercising, maybe not getting involved in meditation, whatever else it is. But what are your thoughts on that? What do you see? Yeah. Um, so uh, it's, it's pretty common. I mean, you know, they're, they're, it's not that easy making major lifestyle changes, seeing a therapist. These aren't easy things, even though they're side effect free and all that. You know, if somebody comes to my office, they're having a severe problem with depression. That means they're, they're probably struggling at work, struggling in relationships. They're struggling to, to you know, for the basics of, of their day-to-day -day life. And if I tell them, all right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to completely overhaul your diet. Right, right. <laughs> okay. Exercising five days a week. Mm -hmm. You're going to start seeing a therapist twice a week. You're going to pour your heart out. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? It sounds it's terrible hard. when you say it that way. Yeah. It does. It's hard, but so the, so it's a catch 22. Like everybody knows you, know, you feel better when you exercise, you feel better when you're eating healthy, you're better, feeling better when you're talking about your, your issues, but it's just hard to do when, when you're in the midst of a, of a bad depression. Yeah. Really, really hard. Really. I, I really feel that. Um, so let me ask you, why did you choose psychiatry? That was a good question. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to do everything. When I was a med student, I, I did my neurology rotation. I thought, wow, this is cool. And then, uh, then I got into gastroenterology. I thought, wow, that's cool. Nephrology, so cool. Everything was just great. You loved it. <laughs> I loved everything. And then the last, uh, the last uh, block I had was psychiatry. And, and, and I thought, wow, this is, this is really great. Yeah. It was, it, it was just so different from everything else. And, it, it, you know, it's less sort of less manualized than other specialties, you know, a lot of subtleties, you know, that needed to be factored in. I just thought it was just so much fun. Yeah. And you love it. You've been doing it a while now. And it's not typical where somebody comes, you know, just out of you know, out of residency and just ready to go, ready to open up their own practice. And you made a move, a physical move from a different state, a little colder over there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you decided to open up shop. So uh, what gave you the courage to do that? Like, who the heck do you think you are? <laughs> That's really, really, I mean, most, most go into a hospital setting or they join a huge practice with, you know, 10 other uh, docs hanging out and, and, and an administrative team and not having to worry about the business end of medicine. So I, I don't know. Why was I so confident? I have no idea. It's really fantastic. But you just, you knew right away that you wanted to be in business by yourself. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I want to know why. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why. I, I, I don't know. What There's got to be... There's going to be some deeper psychological reason. I, I don't know. <laughs> I have a doc you can see about that. Um, no, seriously, like, do you have entrepreneurs in your family or was there? Uh, you know, my, my father's an entrepreneur. He went to Wharton for his MBA. I feel a little bit better now. All right. A little example of entrepreneurship there. I guess. <laughs> what does dad do? He actually owns a, a healthcare school. He, um, yeah, teaches. Uh, he's like nursing programs and a bunch of different programs. It's in Pennsylvania. Very nice. Well, there you go. Because really, you know, I just never hear that. I, I never hear that somebody just starts off right away. And look, you're you're four years in, and you're already <laughs> opening up your second location, which is great. I mean, the growth is great. So it's a uh, bittersweet, I'm sure, to to know that this uh, this field that you've chosen is. Is, is never going away. I mean, people are always going to need help with mental health, but I would be a fool not to ask you about what it's been like during this pandemic. Yeah, it's been really tough for people. Um, so, you know, people are struggling financially, they're socially isolated, and, um, 
uh, it, it's harder to see their doctors. Um, it, it's it's definitely increased people's uh, depression, anxiety, all types of psychiatric disorders actually. So our uh, you know people need more frequent visits. We're getting a lot more calls for new patients who need to be seen. So it, it's been really bad actually. Yeah. I've never seen anything like this. I mean, I haven't been practicing that long, but nonetheless, I, I bet this this kind of thing hasn't happened for a long time. Yeah, I mean, we've all kind of spoken about not only has it been traumatic with the pandemic, but then we went through, um, you know, on un- like rest with with the racial bias, and mm-hmm. and then we also went through this really tough political climate. I hate the word climate. I just sound so stupid. I just said it. <laughs> hate. I want to take it back. Edit that out. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not editing any of it. But really, like, it's been just a tumultuous time in general. You know, uh, right. add in the flavor of the holidays coming at you. And really, people are just um, struggling. So what would be what would be your advice, doctor, um, if somebody is struggling today? Um, I know as well as you probably do, sometimes the most difficult thing is to reach out and ask for help. Um, and that we are trying, you, me, and a, a whole bunch of other people that, that have a passion for the mental health field are, are doing their best to encourage people if you need help to um, ask for help. But what would be your advice to the audience today if they're struggling? Yeah, um, well, you know, it, it's hard to make a kind of a standard recommendation. You know, everybody's different. Everyone's going through different things. But really, I, I think if if uh, if somebody's having a you know significant struggle, they, they need somebody to to listen to their story, figure out what's going on, and and really help them to move forward. I would say you got to pick up the phone. You got to call somebody. You know, you can go on psychologytoday.com find it, find a therapist, you know, it's a psychologystate.com is such a great resource for finding a therapist and a psychiatrist, hop on there, uh, you know, uh, make a couple calls, get an appointment and, and, uh, you know, uh, tell your story, see, see what can be done. They'll either recommend, you know, talking a few times a week, giving you some, some coping skills for what you're going through, some, some behavioral techniques for managing it, or they might say, listen, you might need to see a psychiatrist and, and, you know, and, and, uh, and, and so <laughs> right there. <laughs> and it's not just you in the practice. I, I love the fact that you've expanded um, out to nurse practitioners and physicians assistants. I'm a huge fan. My best friend in New York is a nurse practitioner. And um, I really, I love that, uh, that synergy that comes with, you know, thank God for them at this time too, right? I mean, you need these advanced practitioners to help yeah. you because and I think you, you just added somebody new to your practice as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. We have a, a new ARNP, Lindsay Brogdon. She's great. She worked at a couple of premier psych clinics in the Tampa Bay area in the past. And she's, uh, she's fantastic. So she's seen a lot of folks in our St. Pete office and also some folks in the Tampa office. That's great. And you guys are offering telehealth, teletherapy, telepsychiatry? Absolutely, absolutely. So all, basically, all of the insurance companies uh, started to allow it once the pandemic hit, and um, and and they've been letting us do it, you know, ever since then. And, and we're hoping that uh, some of them will just change their policies and continue allowing it, you know, even after this resolves. Because it's just why so would they crazy. ever go back, right? I, I mean, know. This is the oh, this is one of the only silver linings that we've had in the healthcare industry is that the insurance companies said, we're gonna just go ahead and reimburse the doctors that I don't know, went to med school, like forever. (laughs) You know, I mean, this right now, me talking to you, it feels like therapy for myself. So maybe I don't have to go see my therapist later because of it. No, I'm really, really grateful. I'm really, really, I can't say this enough. Every um, healer that I've had on, over the last few months has just brought tremendous uh, hope and, and um, a little optimism through a dark time. And I'm really grateful that you have not just one location in Tampa, but now you've reached out and expanded to St. Petersburg. Um, we're going to have an event January 7th for just primary care, 
psychologist and therapist to learn more about CMS. So we're really excited about that. We'll have the information in the promo too about how you can attend, but um, I'm really happy that, that you're branching out. Our, our little doctor entrepreneur over there. <laughs> I don't Thanks, know. Sure. My, my dad went to Wharton and he's owned his own business. Well, there you go. There's a little yeah. example for you. <laughs> you better send this to your father. Yeah, maybe I will. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Sharon. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Bye.